All right, welcome back to this behind the scenes look at how I go about building a hit digital course or what I mean by a hit digital course is a course that is taught effectively, designed accessibly and built to foster an inclusive environment. Really all those things fall under this term called universal design for learning. And it's this idea that we're going to build a course that works for everyone so that there's no need for accommodations. There's no need for special exceptions. Everyone will be served by this course and served well. So the course I'm working on, if you missed the first episode, I'll have it linked right above here and down in the description. This is episode two. In the last one, we kind of flushed out our course topic and title and the goals and the transformation. And the last thing we wrapped up on was identifying the three to five plot points. These are the big outcomes I have for my students going through this course. So what I'm gonna do today is I am going to review those. It's been a couple of days, so I wanna come back to them and make sure they still make sense, maybe polish them a little bit. But then one of the things I'm most excited about and one of the things that I am really excited to implement that a lot of people don't is I'm going to create goals for my course. Now you're like, wait, didn't you just say goals and plot points and transformations and outcomes? Yes, I did. And those are kind of the big roadmap. Those are, if you were typing into Google Maps where you're going, those are the addresses. The goals are what it looks like getting to that address. Did you make it there on time? Did you get there early? Did you avoid traffic, right? So we want to create some goals and I'll talk to you why we wanna create those as we dive into it, but I'm really excited to do that. So let's go ahead and we're gonna shift over to the workspace and get going. Okay, so here we are at the workstation. I have my Asana task list pulled up that you'll see here on screen. And I have my um, Google document that's the master doc that is allowing me to put together everything that I'm thinking about so that when I go to start building the course, which I hope to show you a little bit of today, um, it comes easy. So. I have on my phone, I got the Forest app pulled up. Again, I no affiliation, I just love the Forest app. It lets me plant these cute little trees for doing a 25 minute Pomodoro session, keeps me focused. So, yes, Bubba. Wow, watch out, there's cords. Okay, Daddy's recording, I need you to go. Daddy is recording a video, so you gotta go. Yes. I love you. Like I was saying, I've got the Force app pulled up. We're gonna start a 25 minute Pomodoro. We'll work on this and I'll be jumping back and forth to chat with you. So let's go ahead and get it started. There it is. All right, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm reviewing those plot points that we started last time. And so I have these three main plot points here. So I want my students to be able to strategically design, structure, and implement their course to maximize learning. And I want them to have the tools, actionable steps, and guidelines to begin creating accessible digital content. And then, I want them to know the first steps to fostering an inclusive course environment. So that's what these things break down, showing and rereading them here. I'm gonna reread them, gonna think about them and decide whether I want to edit or move on. So thinking about these, I really like them. But what I'm looking at is they're a bit wordy for me. I included the like what you're gonna do and why and the why needs to be part of the copy but once I have conveyed that why behind each of these plot points, it doesn't need to be part of the plot points for 
using them as a destination, right? You, when you type in a Google or an address on Google Maps, you know why you want to go there, but you don't need to like reference that when putting it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to highlight parts of it that I am only going to include in my like sales copy and things that go out to my students. And then when they see and are referencing these plot points, I'm just gonna have the main plot point. Okay, perfect. So I have that, I highlighted it. Just helps me frame a reference. Remember, this is my master list. So the next thing that I'm going to do, when I come back here to my Asana checklist, you'll see that I have three tasks here. And this is identifying the course's minimum goal, target goal, and stretch goal. Now that does kind of sound a little bit like a Kickstarter, but there's a reason that Kickstarters are so effective. So what I want to do is come up with three actionable goals. So if they meet those plot points for my course, what is the minimum that it looks like? What is the very minimum that I want them to get out of it? And again, that might not be my ideal, but it's the minimum. What is the target? So what is my, like, that is awesome, that is where I wanted you to go, That are those are the results I wanted you to see. I am really excited that they hit that target goal. This is where I want most people to fall, is in that target goal. The minimum goal, maybe if they're busy or something, it tells me that they at least met the outcome of the course, maybe not as strongly as I would have liked, but helps them get there. And then the stretch goal is like, what does a knocking out of the park, what does a home run look like here? So because I'm creating a crash course series with three courses, I'm gonna come up with like nine goals here. So let's go ahead and dive into doing that. Okay, so I just went through and I created my first three actionable goals that are gonna be included in the first crash course. Now, what these are, again, like I said, a minimum, a stretch, and a target, not necessarily in that order, but the reason that I'm doing this is these provide little wins throughout the course and one of the ways that we promote engagement and promote students continuing through and meeting the goals that we want and the outcomes that we want is we need to give them actionable wins throughout it so the idea is that the first one is pretty darn easy to hit the minimum goal this provides them a quick win gets them going and helps you know that they are meeting at least the kind of minimum that you'd want them to get out of it. So what I try to do is I try to think of what is the most important thing just in terms of like the most basic and most important thing that they could get out of this crash course and implement. And what this means is it means I had to have a really good idea of what it is I want to teach, the content, the action steps, what I want them to take out of it. So if you're having trouble coming up with these goals, as you go along, you may want to wait until you flushed out your whole course outline and then return to the course goal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to set in my task list in Asana, a reminder to come back or a task to come back and review these course goals after I have flushed out my outline. So let's do that. Okay, there we go. I have it in Asana. It's ready to go. It's kind of towards the end of my outline is I want to come back and go through this. If you're kind of feeling stuck, if you're not as sure about your content and what you want them to get out of it, that's a great way to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and go through my other goals. So the minimum goal that I want my students to get out this effective teaching one is that they can create and implement a plan for the three C's of connection, which 
Connection is so much more important than content when it comes to effective teaching. And so this is one of those things that I wanna make sure if they do nothing else, that they actually think about these three things, consider them, and come up with a plan of exactly how to address them. In fact, if you look at my checklist, after identifying these course goals, the next thing on my checklist is drafting my own plan for the three C's of connection, which is actually gonna be the next video on Thursday. So if you want to see how I'm gonna do that and learn what those three C's of connection are and how I plan to address them, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss Thursday's episode. So that's my minimum goal. And the target goal, and again, students are gonna see these. I'm gonna have them bright and clear. Every time they log into the course, they're gonna see these things. They're gonna know what they are working towards. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that here. It's I'm excited for it. So the target goal is that I want them to meet the minimum goal. So I want to make sure that these goals built on each other in that they couldn't just skip those three C's because they're so important. So I want them to meet the minimum goal and this is one of the things that course creators often miss is they don't have clear plot points or objectives or the purpose of each module and each piece of content within their digital courses. We want to make sure all of our content is relevant and we want to know why we are doing that. Have you ever been driving and the person in this passenger seat says, hey, why'd you go down this road? Well. That's part of the journey, right? You know where you're going. You as a course creator know where you're going and you are taking your students along for the ride and you don't want them to feel lost or confused, right? We don't wanna just say, trust me. We want to set it up. It helps, give them, it helps them frame and scaffold out their learning so that they can, in fact, work through it with you. So I want my students to create one to two plot points for each module and each piece of content in their course. Now that sounds like a lot of work, and it is, it is in terms of, it's not easy to just become a perfect teacher and instructional designer, so there is some work, but it's totally achievable, right? They can do a checklist, they can go through each piece of content one by one, and in my course I'm gonna teach them exactly how to do this and how to implement it and what it looks like. So that's their target goal. And then finally is the stretch goal. This is knocking it out of the park. And one of the things I'm going to ask my students to do at the end of it, and there are other pieces in between, but again, I tried to hone in on the three really big things that I know that they really get a lot out of this course. So I want them to send out anonymous post course surveys. Now what this is, is it is a chance for students and customers to actually give you feedback on how well you teach. And there's an idea called the expert paradox where the more you know your subject, the less you can relate to someone who is a newbie at it. And so what might seem natural steps to you might be A to D, and you forget to include B and C, and your students need A, B, C, D. And we often don't recognize that until it's brought to our attention. So I want to give my students a way to reflect on how their course went. I'm gonna give them some tools to do that, but one of the hardest ones to implement and the scariest one to implement is actually requesting anonymous feedback from the students. So that's gonna be the stretch goal. So I wanna show you how I am going to put these in to my course platform and actually show you my course platform. I'm really excited, it's a new one that I found and the teacher, the instructional designer in me was like drooling. I have used Podia and I, I absolutely love Podia. Um, I'll link right here to a review of Podia and why I love it, but a new course platform has hit the market that I, I, couldn't, I couldn't pass up and it's called Experiencify, right? It's kind, of a, it's kind of a mouthful to be honest, but when you come in here, they have all these tools built into it to allow you to easily and quickly do things that keep students on track and help improve course completion rate. Now, improving course completion rate 
is is everything right because that's what gets your students the results that they need and makes them return customers so those three goals that I just went through I encourage you to put those into your course whatever platform you're using but if you're using Experienceify let me show you what it looks like so this is the home page here where you could see that I've created this effective teaching crash course and there's some basics here right I can go through I could set up some of the behind the scenes things like course payment options add my course contents and it's really easy right pre actions I'm going to talk to you about pre actions here before too long uh, modules and trainings replays bonuses really easy to add everything you need so it's easy to build you can customize your course pages um, you could do a lot of like automatic triggers which are really cool to send automatic emails if they fall out of the course that kind of stuff and I'll show you all those as I'm building my course so what I want to show you here is this first page this is kind of the home page that my students are gonna see obviously I need to update the image and I haven't made a nice graphic for these courses yet I'm still building them I can change the mission so what I am going to do and this is they guide us through it so if you're not a teaching expert this platform guides you through where to put these different things so my mission um, I'm gonna call I'm just gonna put the um, the title of my course so this is gonna be the effective teaching crash course I'm gonna put that there whoops There we go. So the effective teaching crash course, and then it says add a clear mission, goal, or outcome to your uh, course. And so what we have done is we've already done this, and this is why doing it over in Google Docs makes it such an easy switch to actually come over here and start building. So um, I'm going to put my course promise under here. And again, this is what they're gonna see right at the beginning so this is something every time they log on they're gonna see this at the top of the page so I want to make sure it's really relevant and again keeps them focused on that outcome and my big goal for this one my big plot point for this one was this first one and you can see that I came up with those and again go back to that first video but I went through and I created three plot points for the bundle right I'm I'm approaching these as though students are gonna do all three but because they're a crash course I just want one simple fast powerful outcome for each one and so that's this first plot point so I'm also gonna copy that out and come over here down below um, there we go so we have it. I'm gonna check Grammarly. I like Grammarly a lot for these things. Um, I, I like having that in there, so I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna add that space. I'm going to bring it down to there. Perfect. Okay, so now those goals that we created, you can see that there is a minimum target and stretch goal here. So let's bring those over. So create an implement. So I'm gonna bring these over. So the goal one is gonna be here. And one of the cool things that Experienceify does is it actually allows students to earn experience points or bonus points or whatever you wanna think about it. And so their total racks up and it's a lot of fun. Um, so I can, um, change that I can also right here allow students to edit the goal so maybe they want to edit this for their own purposes and what makes sense to them so you could click that and allow them to edit their own goals but I'm gonna leave that off for this one experience so I can do experience or double experience um, and I'm just gonna leave it as 10 points this is this is a big goal they get 10 points that is great and um, what you can do is you can actually 
set it to complete after a certain amount of content. So they have to go through a certain amount of course content in order to complete that. This I could come back to at a certain time and you can see that there's a lot of different options for that. But I just want to go through and put my goals in here. I could edit some of these settings a little bit later. And so my target goal, um, I, I am going to call this my minimum. I am calling the next one the target and you'll see that it's worth more points. It's worth double, right? They had to work more, they had to do more and so they get more points out of it, which again, fun and cool. And then here is the third one. So come back over here and fix that spelling. And you can see that that stretch goal is worth even more points. So I can hit update. And what this does is let me let me show you this. Um, I could preview the course here real quick. And when they come in, if they've done this, watch what happens. Ooh, I like that, right? So it's really cool. Each time they do it, they click it off. There's a little celebration. Um, and some graphics. So we finished our Pomodoro there. That was 25 minutes. I obviously have to create these goals for my other two courses. So I'm gonna do that behind the scenes. Um, you saw me do it here with this first one and talk through it. And so the next episode and what we're gonna do next time is we are going to talk about the three C's of connection and actually create a plan of how I'm going to address these three things in my thank you so much for being here and watching this and being a part of this behind the scenes series and I would love to know what you're working on and specifically I would love to know if you're going to put in three goals to your courses so in the comments below you can say goals if you're gonna add some goals to your course and if you want to go above and beyond Tell me what those three goals are going to be. What's the minimum? What's the target? And what's the stretch? We'll see you next time, y'all.